Hi there, today we're going to be taking a look at Might and Magic Duel of Champions. This is a TCG for the PC and iPad. It's similar to Magic the Gathering and other card games you might be familiar with. Today we're going to be playing a campaign mission against an AI opponent to demonstrate the mechanics of the game without worrying about the uh, turn timer that's imposed in duels against other people. The first screen you'll be greeted with when you begin a duel is the mulligan screen. Very similar to any other TCG, you can keep your hand or you can ditch it. I'm going to keep it, but if I didn't, I would be stuck with my next hand. You can't ditch your hand multiple times, you can only do it once. And then we can see what cards we can play. In this case, we have a green border around our event card down here and our hero up here. And then that indicates that those are the only two things we can do given our resources. Now, uh, resources are obviously the most important part of any uh, game that's similar to Magic, and you know, if you've been watching Hearthstone, you'll be familiar with those as well, even if you haven't played any TCGs before, uh, considering it is a more casual game, and I assume there are some casuals watching that. Um, we have levels instead of different types of resources. We have one type of resource, just called resources, and then we have levels, and that's it. And every turn, we can increase our levels by one, one of these levels by one, uh, and that's indicated on our hero as an ability, in addition to another ability, which is we, uh, which is paying one resource to draw a card. We can have other unique effects, for example, this AI has an effect that allows them to discard a card and give one attack to two friendly creatures until the end of the turn. And our levels are different, so we can see that I start with one might, one magic, and two fortune. They start with zero might, two magic, and one fortune, so they are obviously more, uh, they, they obviously favor spells and such. And that's further indicated by the fact that they have one additional school of magic that they can uh, master, that they can control uh, in comparison to me. I only have two, and I can summon creatures of the Inferno faction as well as neutral creatures and I can obviously play neutral spells and fortunes as well so the one other thing that's uh, worth note is our health and I have 20 and she has 18 that's pretty much the only things I've seen I haven't seen any other health values maybe I just haven't seen all the heroes but 20 and 18 seems to be the only two standards and you know they're just there for balancing purposes I suppose now every turn we get one more resource and whenever we spend uh, that resource to play a card, uh, that resource is gone until the next turn, at which point we'll, we will gain an additional resource, maximum, as well as refill our resources. So just like uh, Magic, The Gathering, just like Hearthstone, if you've been watching those videos, very similar. Obviously the difference comes in what cards you want to uh, build up toward with your stats. So in this case, we need one more Might in order to summon this Demented. And we also have one Magic by default and one Might by default, so we can also summon the Succubus. But we don't have the necessary resources, so we're going to just Might up and end our turn. Down here we can see these event cards have flipped. Those are uh, cards that you need eight of in your deck. And each player's uh, events can be used by the other player. So, for example, this card isn't in my deck. I don't have this card in my deck, but this AI does. So I can play this, or I can play this, or I can play them both, assuming that I have the resources to do so. So there's a lot of strategy involved in what you want to include your deck and what you don't want to include in your deck. Uh, because your opponent may like the cards that you have just as much as you do and may play the cards against you. So now we have two resources, two might, so we can actually play a card, get some board presence, and we will play it here. As indicated by this green, uh, these green positioning things, uh, we have a melee creature, and it can be played in the front row. See, melee there, and here's a shooter, and it can be played in the back row, and magic shooter, in fact. So our flyer, right here, can be played on either the front or the back row. Every turn, a minion can either move or attack, unless their card specifies otherwise, and on the first turn that they are summoned, just like a magic, they have a sort of summoning sickness and they can't attack until the next turn. So right now we're out of things to do, but we still have our hero ability. If we press end turn right now, it'll say, you didn't use your action this turn, do you, you, want, you want to do something? And you can say, yeah, I want to, that's probably a good idea, and you can prepare for your next turn. For next turn, we probably want to get up another Might, just so that we can play this, so we're going to do that. 
you can see there's also a lot of strategy involved in what you want to uh, build up as you're playing because obviously if you don't have the necessary level for something you can't play it so I don't have three magic so right now this is just a dud in my hand I can't play it until I get up to three magic a lot of strategy and this creature here has sweep attack so I kind of want to demonstrate uh, the kind of board presence strategy that you have so with sweep attack if a creature is right here uh, and I hit it any creature above and below it will get damaged as well so you can sort of see how the um, sort of uh, area of effect abilities come into play We're just gonna end our turn end our turn and hope we get a uh, opponent uh, hope we get the opponent to play something uh, nope nope just a sort of regeki break kind of deal one of them a single target uh, damage thing actually no this is an AoE this is all non playing creatures so you can see that it was placed in the graveyard afterwards so very similar to any other TCG that you may have played like Yu-Gi-Oh or uh, Magic the Gathering you can sort of um, expect to see recursion uh, you can see recycling of cards monster reborn that sort of thing and in this case we just want to play some more uh, creatures out on the field. I think we're just going to play a Cerberus out so that we can get some area denial, and then we're just going to beat on the hero because there's nothing standing in our way. If there was anything here, we would have to deal with it before we can actually attack the hero directly to reduce their life points. And then there's nothing else we can do except for prepare for our next turn. Next turn, we're going to be able to get one more Might out. So, just in case, we are going to do that so that we can uh, add whatever we want next turn. Instead of uh, being forced to play a Might. Hopefully we get a block. Yep, there's a blocker. So now we can demonstrate the combat a bit. And also, ongoing spells. So this creature has a spell underneath it, sort of attached, and that will make it receive half damage from shooter creatures rounded down. We don't have any shooter creatures, we only have melee creatures, so that's kind of irrelevant, but hey, the AI isn't too amazing. And we can also demonstrate spells, how they work, if we want, but I think right now we're just going to summon out the Ravager because he has massive six damage and he's just fantastical. So we're just gonna play him here so that we can get the beating on and just sort of do some damage. Uh, you can you can uh, see the stats in play here. Uh, we have our damage. We can see two damage going off there. But in addition, we have two other stats, which are retaliation and health. Unlike, for example, Hearthstone or Magic, where you can kind of expect uh, the damage to your minion when you attack to be equal to the other uh, the uh, targeted minion's attack. In this case, they're separate. So if I were to attack with a creature. Uh, and hit this creature, I would receive one point of damage in retaliation rather than two because they're separate. Adds a bit more strategy to the game, a bit more complexity if you don't like that, uh, depending on your point of view. But I kind of like it. And uh, in this case, we have immune to retaliation, which means we don't take any retaliation damage whatsoever. Something to keep in mind. And also, something to keep in mind that um, may be a stumbling block for newcomers, is that if I were to deal damage to this creature, and kill it right now, even if I didn't have immune to retaliation on, I still wouldn't take retaliation damage simply because my damage would kill off this creature before they had a chance to retaliate. Keep that in mind, you don't receive retaliation damage if you kill the creature unless their card specifically states that when they die they deal the retaliation damage, which is on some cards. So now, there's nothing else we can do except for prepare for our next turn. So we are going to prepare to play our town portal in one turn after our next, so we can add one magic and end our turn. Now you may notice there's a bunch of spaces here. Uh, I'm pretty sure the... Yes, this AI does have cards that go here, but we haven't seen one yet, so I'll just explain that before the duel ends up ending. Um, we have cards in the middle of all of these rows, which indicate that uh, it's a target where you can place a card and it'll affect the entire row. If you have a card that does affect an entire row, and on top we have slots for affecting an entire line. And some of them are ongoing and they'll prevent creatures on that line from attacking or they'll do damage and that sort of thing and in the areas above our heroes we have a slot for uh, ongoing fortunes and spells that don't necessarily target anything in in particular they just sit up there sort of away from the rest of the field right now we can show you that uh, sort of retaliation thing I was talking about we have no immune to retaliation on this creature but 
this uh, creature has to retaliation. So in theory, we should take damage, but we're not going to take any simply because the creature is going to die and be sent to the graveyard. And there you go, a graveyard. Got lots of uh, potential for uh, summoning minions, you know, with like Monster Reborn type things if this was a Necro deck, which it isn't. It is a um, s Stronghold, I believe, faction. Yeah. So we're just going to dish out damage because I'm an Inferno, and rushing down is exactly what I do best. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we can play cards. Right now I have five resources, so I can play uh, one Flying, which I'm going to do right here. And I'm going to play one uh, Succubus for the for the extra damage behind another minion. The reason why I'm playing it behind a, uh, a melee creature is so that if they play something that can... Uh, deal that can block me, I can immediately attack that, kill it, and then have a straight line of sh sight to deal some damage. And then we can prepare for our next turn and end. Again, there are fortune cards in play that I could use, but really I don't see the point because um, uh, this AI is just toast. So, bam, and let's just end with this. And that is the massive GG right there. Yes, indeed. Okay, so aside from the in-game stats, there are your persistent stats you have to keep in mind. That is ELO, which is something you may be familiar with if, you're, uh, if you've are if you been watching any other esports or traditional sports that use a matchmaking system that uh, ranks players. Uh, the higher your ELO, the more murdered you are likely to get, and also the higher skilled you are most likely to be considered. Uh, your level is mostly just for achievements. I haven't actually found any use for it aside from gaining achievements. And you do get a lot of rewards in this game uh, until you sort of run out of achievements. At, the, at that point, it starts slowing down. Every day, you can stash your rewards at about uh, 8 o'clock GMT minus 5. I don't know what that is in any other time zones, but about that time, you can log on and uh, stash your rewards and build up, and then at the end of the week, get a big payoff. So you get a lot of rewards in this game for just playing. It's really fun. Um, you have two forms of currency. You have gold. That's sort of your diamond dozen. You know, you gain this just by playing the game currency, and you can use it to buy uh, basic set packs and such. And then you have seals, the kind of thing that you want to save up for a big purchase for, like, a big old pack of cards and such. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, be sure to check out uh, some of the... Uh, stuff on the forum that includes promotional codes that you can enter uh, in the shop for lots of free stuff, free cards and such. I'll hopefully have some content out, eventually showing off some human-to-human -human duels, uh, maybe even some tournaments, using these tournament tickets up here. <coughs> uh, otherwise, <clears throat> I will see you next time.